What does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 150,000. What? There's no way that can be right. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quartering, and as things continue to get put on tighter and tighter lockdown, it's becoming clear that there will be certain parts of fandoms, geekdom, hobbydom, that will not survive this or will be so greatly damaged that they'll never appear to be the same again. One of those, to me, is most certainly the comic book industry. What was once considered a feed line for modern cinema has basically been ignored and treated as a pet project by large companies like Marvel and DC, putting aside large budgets for woke trash and the occasional decent Batman book. And after everything is done, it is my prediction that many small comic book shops will never reopen and most small comic book companies may never reopen. There has been a chain reaction of things that started a few days ago that is going to create a ripple effect that is going to cripple the entire comic book industry. And, you know, they could have done better. They could have prevented this by focusing on good quality books and not the spray and pray technology or the spray and pay mentality that they have been. The, the, the uh, write books for Twitter mentality. No, I'm not saying that putting out a new Warriors comic book, some woke single one shot that looks terrible is just earth shatteringly bad. But the problem is you paid three or four people to work on that. Could you have better spent those resources on a better Superman book, a better Batman book, a better Deadpool book, books that actually sell? Well, of course you could have. Any idiot knows that. And with more and more closures, uh, I'm not sure that the industry will be able to rebound. Just two days ago, 34% of the comic book shops in the United States had closed. And that doesn't include the metropolitan areas in Texas, Mission, Kansas, and Missouri that are not statewide, meaning it was probably close to 50%. And I'm going to guess those numbers are closer to 70, 80, or even 90% right now. The other thing you have to understand about the comic book industry is most of these stores are run by fans. They aren't run by people who expect to make a ton of money. These people rely on a few times a year, a big selling book or a collectible that they'll get exclusive rights to that they might actually make some money that month. For the next several months, these people now won't even have any new books to count on or sell. And on top of that, just think about if you're the struggling comic book owner. And again, I identify this because I know many local game shop owners. Not all of them sell comics, but it's the same mentality. So now, over the next two, three months, you're not getting any new books. That's right, Diamond Studios has shut down comic book distribution, as well as DC shutting down comic book distribution. DC Comics Printer closes tomorrow. Bleeding Cool is trying to stay on top of the current effects of everything. We've already been told that Diamond Comic Book Distributors has cl is closing its doors to all new product. That means put the pens down, no more work. Through comic books, magazine, toys, games, etc. that they've already received will still be distributed if they can over the following weeks. We've also learned that there will be alternative attempts to distribute to stores that are still open, even from publishers exclusive to Diamond, as Diamond has also stated that stores can sell this week this week's comic books as is when they receive them. UK stores will have to wait till delivery on Thursday. Well, they're not going to be open. They're on shutdown. A statement from Diamond is expected. We already got that statement later. Diamond Steve's Geppi confirms closure. No new comic books after this week. Now, to give you an idea, to give you an idea, the ripple effect that this is going to cause means even after these comic book shops are allowed to open back up, you're probably out till if they if they could open at the end of April, let's say, these comic book shops are done until July, maybe longer. They're not going to have any new books. And you know what the books that they're going to have in the pipeline, the books that they're going to get to try and bounce back with, 
books that have almost 150,000 downvotes. Because the new Warriors, that's happening. 150,000 downvotes. And let's see how their Children of the Atom book that they promoted as well. Let's see how that's doing. Because I'm sure it's doing amazingly. Let's see, 114,000 views. Let's see, 15,000 downvotes to just 1,000 upvotes. This is what is waiting for struggling comic book store owners when they finally get to reopen. And let me also describe the way that this is going to work. When these stores close down over the next few months, many of them live month to month, just like their employees and the people that shop at these stores. What's gonna happen if 80% of your customers can't get a new book for three months? Some significant portion of them are gonna do what? They're gonna find a different hobby. People are going to forget about it. When you are the hardcore every week on pull day going to get your comic books, that's a habit. It's something you habitually do. If you go two, three months without going in for your pull list, you become more and more likely to never go back. Then when you combine the fact that we get things like Children of the Atom and New Woke Warriors coming down the line, You don't even have anything to be interested in right now. You're not waiting on anything. You could talk about Batman's White Knight series maybe. I mean, maybe there's a few books you're excited about. But then you compound on top of that that it's going to be two, three months before new books get into the pipeline. This will absolutely be the final death blow for a lot of local comic book shops and a lot of small printers. When you look at even the Hollywood Reporter covering it, quote, this is the moment we've been dreading. The spe specialty comic book market is facing something that could, without an appropriate response, prove decimating to the industry as a whole. Quote, we've reached the moment we've all been dreading, said the email. It was Ed Greenberg, the owner of Collector's Paradise, a comic book shop which has three stores in the LA area. In a message to his customer base, he was reacting to the mayor shutting the city down. We've been selling comics for close to 26 years now, and this is truly the first time that we are uncertain about the future of our store, our industry, and our favorite art form. Continue the email, which in many ways summed up the precarious state of the comic book retail industry. Even before everything, comic book shops had been struggling to reinvent themselves as sales slumped. But with social distancing and everything else, um, without an appropriate response, it will prove decimating to the industry as a whole. Comic book shops uh, were already in the process of adapting this week. When The Hollywood Reporter stopped by LA's Golden Apple Comics on Wednesday, it had curtailed its hours with staff wearing gloves and sometimes masks. It also limited the amount of people it let in its store and even set up a comic book car hop. But the latest news packed a Thanos-sized punch. As of Friday, all California and New York are under shutdown for non-essential business. Illinois followed suit and Wisconsin followed suit and many others have since this article has been written. Quote, I sent an email to my top five suppliers asking if they were going to be offering returnability on the other end of this. I have three weeks of orders in the pipeline and zero ability to sell these books in any meaningful way. Longtime California retailer Brian Hibbs wrote on Facebook at the start of the week ahead of the enforced closure that two of his stores, two of the five, ignored me. The other two gave me really dark answers, and it's clear they are using each other as excuses. Well, when the ship's sinking, they're going to save themselves. It's probably only 80% of the reassurance I want, but it's something. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and one only image stepped up and said the returnable for now. That's two out of, that's just 20%. Guidance from both publishers and central distributor Diamond Comics distributors have been arriving through the week, albeit evolving, often contradictory, contradic contradictory piecemeal fashion. As Hibbs' note suggests, Image Comics was the first publisher to step up, making all new releases fully returnable for the next two months and staggering or canceling some releases. 
DC, at time of writing, has yet to release its own statement. The Hollywood Reporter reached out to a spokesman and confirmed that the publisher is working on a meaningful plan to help alleviate current stress of the comic book industry that the communication to retailers is forthcoming. Here's the thing. You're talking about a mega, essentially a mega chain. Three whole stores in the comic book. Most comic book stores are owned by one dude or one chick, and they own one location in the cheapest possible retail space they can find in town. That's how it looks to every comic book shop I've ever seen. These people don't have a hope. By the way, shops looking for relief do have a few options. Last year, the Forge Fund was established to assist retailers in times of need. Additionally, independent publisher Mad Cave Studios on Thursday launched a crowdfunding campaign to assist smaller retailers with the intent to raise at least $100,000 to be shared equally across all retailers asking for financial aid. At the time, it's raised over $10,000, which is nothing. That's not even a dollar per retailer. Despite many challenges, many remain optimistic about what lies ahead. Sure, maybe... But the comic book industry isn't it hasn't exactly been booming before this. One core problem is that retailers are expected to predict book sales and they have been and then pre-ordering according to their estimates. This means they've already paid for several orders months ahead of time, and as a result, any period of disruption will cause significant cash flow problems. Here's what I can say. If you're loyal to your comic book shop, try to get a hold of them, try to pay over the phone for your books and maybe have them mail them to you. Pay the, Say, look, I have a local pub. Uh, I think it's a, people are, uh, it's no secret that I enjoy a little sip every once in a while. I have a local pub. I called them. They're doing takeout for uh, food. And although I don't know if they can now that Wisconsin's under official lockdown, maybe they still can. But Saturday I called them. I said, I don't care. Charge me whatever fee I want to support you. And they actually have a GoFundMe for their for their waitresses and stuff right now. If this stuff goes on for weeks, you're going to see a lot of these small town businesses completely collapse. And that doesn't even matter if there's any kind of stimulus package ever happens. Well, whoopie doo, you give everyone a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's great. It, I mean, I'm not, I mean, please send the money, but it's not going to save comic book shops because people, what do people spend their money on? Comics, most smart people. Now, we all have our vices and we all have our times we spend money foolishly, but comics are a luxury item. You're buying food, you're paying rent before you're buying comic books. Again, the ripple effect for this, if if everything's only shut down for a few weeks, will close a significant number of comic book shops. And Marvel has done absolutely nothing to help them at this point other than Make them extraordinarily sad. And the butt of the joke, uh, nearly 150,000 people have laughed at already. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please support your local comic book shop if you can. And we'll talk to you again real soon.